My name is David Caldwell, and with almost two decades of experience in the Portland metro area real estate market and a passion for data-driven insights, I'm here to bring you the latest trends, advice, and stories from the world of real estate. Whether you're buying, selling, or just love staying informed about the market, this podcast is your one-stop source for expert insights and personal perspectives. So let's dive in and ask the all-important question, how's the Portland real estate market? Hey everybody, my name is David Caldwell. I'm here with Krista Britton, and we are talking about the most boring but important topic in Portland real estate, which is what is going on in the Portland housing market. So there's some positive news, there's some good news, um, but here's the reality. If you're looking at buying or selling, this is just information that you need to know and have. So let's get started with the number one question, which is how's the market? When people ask how's the market, we believe they're actually asking us what is happening with the average sales price. So when we compare 2024 to 2023 through May, the average sales price in the Portland metro area has actually increased 2.2% from $588,200 to $601,200. And if we look at the same time period, the median price has also increased 1.9% from 525 to 535. Now, for everyone out there who's shopping for a deal, keep in mind, this is still a lower average sales price than we had in 2022 or 2023. So we have seen the market slightly contract, but we're on pace to where it looks like maybe 2024 is a little bit more expensive than 2023, which would be good news. What are your thoughts, Krista? I mean, yeah, if we're seeing the prices, I mean, I mean that $20,000, right? Like with interest rates kind of going up and down. And I think there's a lot of people that are still kind of sitting right on the, like waiting for that crash, right? They're just waiting for these numbers to come like crazy down and like a steep avalanche. It's just, it's, it's that's not what the market's showing it's not bearing that it's like what's gonna what's it gonna take for people to kind of get off that like the market crash numbers based on all the numbers that we keep seeing yeah i think one thing people have to keep in mind is we went from a great real estate market and now we're two years really we're two years in to seven percent interest rates mm-hmm. and the real estate market's barely moved because when we think about a move of like one or two percent or from six hundred and ten thousand to six hundred thousand as an average sales price those are just deals that can be negotiated, mm-hmm. right? You know, it's we haven't seen this massive shift. And I think one reason why is that if you are a homeowner, homeowners have a tendency to fiercely protect their equity. Homeowners yes. also, predominantly in the marketplace today, are locked into historically low interest rates. So there's a disincentive to move. I will move only if I can accomplish X. Mm-hmm. One of the things we're seeing in the country and in the Portland metro area is more homes starting to come to sale for sale, which we'll talk about, and then removing themselves from the market when they don't have success rather than reducing the price. Mm -hmm. So this whole thought that the market is going to crash, collapse, pretty unrealistic. You know, at least history would show us that that is a pretty unrealistic thought. But if you are that home buyer that's looking to get a value, this is a marketplace where you can get a value Mm -hmm. because there are still motivated sellers in the marketplace. There just isn't a a plethora of them. You know, I had an agent ask me today if she could write basically a low offer on one of my listings and that I could just counter. And my response to her was no. If you write me too low of an offer, I'm not going to counter because I don't want to do this for an entire transaction, right? Like we're negotiating right now, right? We don't have the offer yet, but this is kind of like a pre-negotiation negotiation. negotiation. I don't want your crappy offer because then I'm going to get a crappy repair addendum. Yeah. You're setting the tone from the get-go. Setting the tone from the get-go. You know, there are some people that when you ask that question, they're like, yeah, just write it up, right? That agent's setting the tone, that it's okay to negotiate that way. Bring me a good offer, right? Or just don't bring me one. 
Like we, we don't but, need it. We're getting activity on that listing. Uh, here's the deal though. To argue, to count, to give you an argument on that though, I've had sellers that do not know what they're willing to accept until something's in writing. So I say, you know, depending on how long it's been on the market or what's going on, like send it over. And right. The counter, the counter argument I make on this property, which you don't have the, the, the details on. Right? Yeah, I don't have the, the hot gas. But it's, but it's it's new on market. And I don't care yeah. if my client's willing to accept less when they deserve more. No. And I and I agree with that. It's it's totally determined. It's determined based on the property, all the background, everything like that. But yeah. I just want like buyers to know that if you do see a property that you really like, I would still just recommend writing the offer. Right? If, especially for those <laughs> buyers out there that have been sitting on the sidelines and they're scared. You write that first offer, I think you feel a little bit more relief and you feel a little bit better and you're more motivated to get out there if you've been sitting on the sidelines, right? And I'll, and I'll, and I'll give some advice too. Okay. No days on market properties. I've had two people want to reach like that in the last 24 hours. And I just told the agent not to waste their time. Yeah. There's a time that it's appropriate and there's a time that it's yeah. not. Agreed. Agreed. A hundred percent. And that's why... You speak with your realtor and you figure out what that time is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What's realistic and what is not, you know, there, there's this thing where it's like, there's no harm in asking. Well, there, there mm -hmm. actually is when you're looking at a very emotional asset for a lot of people, mm -hmm. most people, they're not, it's not selling a stock. It's not selling a car. You know, it's not those things, you know, it's their home and it could yeah. be your future home. And, you know, we're talking like, when someone says they're going to make me a low offer, I'm thinking the offer is like five to 10% under asking price. Mm -hmm. you know, a low offer isn't one or 2% under asking price. Okay. A low offer isn't two or 3% yeah. under asking price. And depending on the price point in the area, it could vary as well. But, you know, the, the thought that some people might just be desperate, right? Or what I think is the funniest question in real estate is how motivated is your seller? <laughs> well, every seller who has assigned the yard wants to sell their home. But most sellers don't want to give their home away. You know, that's why we're seeing pricing starting to increase again, right? Because the consumer has even recognized that pricing is kind of what it is in mm -hmm. today's market. So, you know, when we look at the average sales price, it's increasing. That's indicative of the leverage being on the side of the seller. What have we experienced for the last 12 to 18 months with values actually declining year over year when we look at numbers like that, well, we saw leverage being on the buyer side. So we could be in a time in the market where the tide is turning. And strategy is important when you're looking at acquiring what is a $600,000 asset, which is the average sales price in the Portland marketplace. Mm -hmm. So let's get into new listings. All so right. New listings year to date are up 6.8% from the same time last year. We've seen 13,337 listings come to the market. If we look at the five, last five years, that's the second lowest number of listings coming to the market. Um, what should what should buyers know about the amount of inventory coming to the market right now, Krista? So with the amount of inventory coming to the market, we are, right, it's, it's a lower amount, right? But then we are seeing days on market have gone up. Like it's taken longer for homes to sell, right? That's increased. So we're seeing some properties that first weekend get multiple offers, right? Depending on if they're that unicorn property, the one that everybody wants. And then we are seeing some that sit because maybe, you know, they need maintenance or they're not, they don't show as well. So if you are one of those, for instance, I've got a bunch of buyers, they're looking for one level homes that are updated. When those come on, they are hard to find. We're seeing multiple offers, right? So you have to jump quick. But there's other properties that come on and they're sitting for a while, you know, and we're probably going to start seeing, and we kind of talked about that, David, right? Is like, we're going to probably, inventory is probably going to increase with if homes don't continue to sell. Yeah, we might have a lower amount now, but third, fourth quarter, those homes might still be there depending on the property. Yeah, well, if we actually look at last month, we had the highest number of average listings on the market mm -hmm. at any time in the last three years. So the amount of homes coming for sale is less, 
but the amount of homes available while you're shopping is more. Mm -hmm. That's something that buyers need to know that's happening in today's market. So less inventory coming to the market, more available options. And that is good news for a buyer. Now, if you're a home seller, you have to look at that and really evaluate the asset that you have. A question I've been asking clients is how comfortable are you being on the market for 90 days? Mm -hmm. Now, let's keep in mind that average days on market is around 80 days in a lot of areas right now. Now, certain mm -hmm. price points are selling faster. If you have a really good home, really good product, maybe you hit the market right and you're going to go pending right away or in the first couple of weeks. But we are in a marketplace where days on market is extending. You know, when we look today at our website, hillshirerealtygroup.com, there's 4,577 homes on the market. Now, we were saying that last September, October, after the busy listings, listing season. And when we get into pendings, this is going to be really important to think about, is we are at a time of the market where listings have a tendency to stack up. So this is let's shift to pending sales because this is really important. Marry the house date, the rate continues to be bad advice because interest rates are 7%. And I have content that we filmed in October of 2022 where interest rates were 7%. Now, interest rates are an 8%, so maybe good advice if you're an 8%er when you're buying. But we have not seen the rate relief that so many people so desperately want. And how has that impacted people's ability to purchase? Well, normally, let me get my piece of paper out here. Normally pending sales during the month of May, which we do, or sorry, during the month of, of May, which we just saw, um, 2017, 3,400, 2018, 3,200, 2019, 3,300, 2020, 3,100, 2021, unicorn year, 3,700, 2022, 3,100, 7% interest rates rear their ugly head, 2,379. 2024, 2,363. And those are big numbers of pending sales coming to the market or in the marketplace today. When we hit around 2,500, those are some of the best months for pending sales we've seen. But if we look just last month, we had 3,500 homes come to the market. Now, I'm not very good at math, but that's like a thousand home gap. And we're getting into a time of year where that's gonna be a reoccurring theme. So if you're a home seller, what you have to know is that there's more competition, but the amount of buyers has been pretty finite in the 7% interest rate market. So, you know, is there an opportunity to have success and set records? Yes. You know, I have a house that'll probably go pending today, which will be the most expensive sale ever in the neighborhood. I like that a lot more than like, I sold this house $10,000 over list price. Like the, the thread we should be posting is highest sales price ever, right? And that can be achieved in this marketplace, but it's hard to achieve things in this marketplace with people that don't know what's going on in the market because the real estate market isn't always good. Right. You know, last, last month we talked about, Krista, how would we define a robust housing market? And it would be one that many people can participate in. But right now we're trending having less home sales in the Portland metro area in 2024 than we did at 2023, albeit maybe at a slightly higher price. So I just talked a lot. What, what, would, you, what would your thoughts be for <laughs> sellers? I mean, for sellers, the number one thing I think to come out to is when you're like, everyone asks about marketing, right? Marketing your home is really, really important, but also hand in hand is pricing. So really knowing what's going on the market and coming out with your home priced appropriately because buyers are still sniffing. Like they still know when something's overpriced and you're not seeing overpriced homes anymore. Just take off. That's just going to give you longer days on market. And ultimately you're going to sell for less, right? So coming out and with, you know, after looking at all the history and looking at all the data, knowing and having that plan to come out priced appropriately uh, it's really important. Now, neither one of us, we always say, like, don't have a crystal ball, right? But going based on the market data is going to be really, really important. And that's where you, sometimes you got to really get those emotions out of it. You need to prep your home because, right, there's also going to be more homes on the market because a lot of homes are sitting. So what's going to make your home stand out and be better, right? 
look, I talked to a home seller this morning and in the price band that he's looking at selling, it represents, you know, for the last couple of years on a monthly basis, about 1% of the total home buyers in the market. And if we take a bigger $200,000 price band, because it's a property over a million dollars, we're looking at 2% of the total market. And one of the things I told him is it would be really easy to be wrong on price if that's mm -hmm. the case. You know, like if you got 98% on a test when you were in school, you'd be stoked, right? Now that's harder in real estate. People don't want to get 98% of list price, but mm -hmm. you know, it's easy to be off by one or 2%. Mm -hmm. and there's things in the marketplace we don't dictate, you know? So with that being said, and going to what Chris has said, like presentation, strategy, pricing, I think one thing that's really underappreciated is representation. Mm -hmm. Someone's ability to articulate the market sometimes is the difference between keeping a transaction together or letting it fall apart. Mm -hmm. I know, David, you've had to go to other buyer's agents or let's say you're on the opposite end and you've had to explain the market to them, which then they reiterate to their client, which then saves the deal because that agent may have been in, you know, not doing it as long or doesn't understand the market. And that's, I mean, that's why working with someone that can articulate and explain what is going on and give you real time numbers, not just feelings is really important. Yeah. And we're coming into this marketplace where more than ever, the percent based compensation that we earned is being questioned. Mm -hmm. And there are some changes going on in real estate to how does a buyer's representative earn their, their living? How, or who pays for it? Mm -hmm. How are things getting incentivized? Mm -hmm. Right. And you know what? It's variable. It, it's different, right? Um, the biggest half-truth in real estate has always been that commissions have always been negotiable. They haven't been. They've been negotiable at one point, and then there's a rule that we're not supposed to talk about it, which is why things are changing. Mm -hmm. It's a half-truth, right? But as we go into this new marketplace, the representative that you choose, the person you choose to represent you, is going to be really important because there are going to be these additional negotiations. Mm -hmm. Right. Things aren't going to be as easy and fluid. You know, this isn't a, a rule that I think makes the real estate market better or easier to navigate. I actually think it adds a level of complexity. You know, now some people might get a better value. Some people might get a worse when it comes to percent based compensation. Who knows? We'll talk about that another day. So <laughs> let's move on to what's happening with closed sales year to date. Right. David, the real estate market's so hot. Year-to-date, closed sales are at 0.4%. 8,211 closed sales through five months of the year. And we have well over a population of a million people. Is this a robust housing market or not? Right? Can a lot of people participate? Are a lot of people participating? Now, again, I'm not very good at math, but that's averaging less than 2,000 sales a month. You know, we know that we're on pace to list more than 30,000 homes this year, but we're on pace to sell less than 24,000. We're on pace actually to sell, you know, around 21,000. So there's going to be a lot of home sellers that come to the market this year that do not have the success that they were hoping for. Now, if you're a home buyer, music to your ears, that could be some of your leverage. But we have to look back and go, okay, well, most of these sellers would actually opt not to sell rather than sell at a discount because of these historically low mortgage interest mm -hmm. rates. So we have a really interesting housing market because it's strong and it's resilient, which we've talked about before, but it's not necessarily robust. And if you're a home seller, one of the things that you need to know is that you are selling in one of the most challenging real estate markets in a decade. Again, it doesn't mean you can't achieve record pricing. We're achieving record pricing for clients all the time. I can give you many different scenarios of that happening. But it's happening because we're strategic, because we have a plan, because we're willing to invest in marketing, because when the person shows up at an open house, we represent people we think in a different way. Mm -hmm. We present the home in a different way. But that's how you achieve success in a marketplace where year to date, 13,000 homes have come to the market and only 8,000 only 8, have sold. Thoughts, comments, concerns? <laughs> I mean, one of the things too, I think people get scared too with, with like with, with buyers, right? 
they're like, oh, well, if I buy, you know, is it all of a sudden the price is going to go down, which is always a concern, which is why I think people sit on the sidelines and affordability. And then I've got a lot of sellers, right, that are on the sidelines on selling because of that low interest rate. They maybe want to hold on to that home, right, because they want to keep it to a rental. They don't want to lose that interest rate, but they need that equity to buy the next home, right? So there's all these different paths that people can play. And so what's important is to figure out because every situation is different. Everyone has a different economic past, future, and what they feel comfortable with their comfort level. But nobody wants to be house poor. You know, everyone has a different level of comfort with, with money, finances, all those kinds of things. It's important then to sit down with the, the expert, right? I'm working with someone right now that they're trying to decide, should I sell this house to buy this house or should I hold on to this house? So we're doing all that investigative work. I'm, you know, figuring out how much their house is valued at. I'm having title put together the net sheets, right? How much will they walk away from? I'm setting them up with mortgage brokers that can give them different types of loans, what their interest rates going to look like. Should they do a bridge loan? All those types of things. I'm having them meet with their tax preparation, look at taxes. There's a lot to go into it. So even if you're not ready or it's something you're thinking about, we can be part of that process to help you plan and figure out what pieces to move or what makes the most sense for you. Right. But we can't do that without having that conversation. Yeah. And one thing I'd say, too, for the people that have concerns, they're going to buy a house. Maybe something's going to happen with values. Mm -hmm. When we look at the last 30 years, there's been five years of depreciation. Four during the Great Recession. One that we experienced last year. And we're halfway through the year and the trend line for home values has increased. Pretty much every 10 year period of Portland real estate, if you own a home for 10 years, which is what, how long most people own a home. You feel like a genius when you sell. I mean, that is that is just a big truth. And, you know, what goes up must come down, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we did have a little come down. We could have had a reset. What we know right now is that Americans, people in our, in our community, they're the most equity-rich homeowners we've ever had in history. We also know if you want to build a house, you're going to pay basically more than a county... Uh, employee salary in permits. Mm -hmm. so affordable affordable housing in our community will not exist. It can't exist with what it costs to develop land and just get permits from the county. You know, if we want affordable housing, let's work with the county to get the cost of permits down because we'll never have affordable housing with what it costs to build a home today. And I hate to say it, but that is one of the reasons why real estate is such a good asset and why we see appreciation so frequently in the Portland housing market. With inflation comes appreciation. With cost of permits increasing, with cost of materials increasing, you see home price appreciation. And I want affordable housing as bad as everybody. I want everybody to be able to participate in the housing market. But as an asset, real estate is like a it's like a treasury bond it is just something that is going to pay you if you own it for a certain period of time so if you have any questions about the portland housing market if you want to get in touch with me or krista you can email me at hello or email us at hello at hillshire realtor group.com thanks everyone